Hi, I'm Isha Jane. Uh, I'm a Sandler Fellow here at UCSF. I've been here about six months and really loved every minute of it. Uh, I'm in the Department of Physiology, and my lab is located at the Cardiovascular Research Institute. Uh, I'm excited today to tell you a little bit about how I came to be here at UCSF and how I became interested in science. Um, so I actually became interested in the biomedical sciences at a very early age. Uh, I have a distinct memory of the first time that I was really taken by the field. Uh, I was reading a popular science article in uh, either Discover or Scientific American, and it was about this thing called telomerase, um, which as we know is the enzyme that repairs the ends of chromosomes and protects them from being damaged. Um, and I remember being taken by two, two particular things. Uh, one was that the human body had come up with such a beautiful and elegant way to solve a problem that existed in our system. Um, and the second thing was that we could take this knowledge as humans and as scientists and use that to really understand disease and develop treatments. Um, and so at that age, you know, I was in seventh grade, I was really taken by the idea of curing aging, you know, finding the fountain of youth. Um, and so this really sort of latched on um, my interest. Uh, and what's interesting is also that the discoverer of telomerase was Elizabeth Blackburn, who's actually here at UCSF. Um, and I remember reading about this amazing woman in science and this contribution that she'd made and really wanting to meet her and be like her. Um, and so I actually remember sitting on a panel discussion in about 11th grade or 12th grade uh, where I was the high school panelist and she was the sort of senior scientist. Um, and I remember thinking, wow, I'm so lucky to be here sitting next to my idol. Um, and so to now be here at UCSF and have my lab here where Dr. Blackburn is actually located is really a dream come true. Um, and so for me, my interest in science uh, was actually you know, twofold. One was this sort of seemingly random moments of inspiration. Um, and the second thing was these key individuals who really helped me along the way and really held out their hand and helped me rise to the next step. Um, and so I remember first, uh, after reading this article, I emailed the entire biology department at the nearby university and asked if I could come visit their lab and uh, work in their lab. And one person replied, uh, Professor Kathy Iovine, uh, and she said, sure, come, come by the lab and let's see what we can do. And so she told me, she showed me how to hold a pipette, she showed me how to do my first experiment, run a gel, um, and if it wasn't for her, I really don't think that I would be here today. Um, and there's been key individuals like this who have helped me at every single step along the way. Um, and especially here at UCSF, uh, Brian Black, David Julius have really helped me get established and set up the lab and been very, very supportive. Um, so I'm very grateful to these individuals. Uh, and so now here at UCSF, my lab is focused broadly on the topic of oxygen, the role of oxygen in disease and metabolism. Uh, you might think that that's a fairly simple concept, right? Oxygen is what we need for life, it's what we breathe. Uh, but turns out there's actually a lot more nuanced details to the role of oxygen in disease and metabolism. Um, and so typically when we think about medicines, we think about them as being small molecules or pills or biologics. Um, and what my lab is really excited to pioneer is the idea that you can change the amount of oxygen that you're breathing as a therapeutic. Um, so just the way you might walk into a room and change the temperature setting or the temperature dial, uh, similarly, we think that we might be able to walk into a room and turn the oxygen dial to low or high as a way to treat patients. Um, and so I actually showed this first for a class of disorders called mitochondrial disorders. Uh, mitochondria are the parts of the cell that make ATP um, and perform many other vital functions. And when you have a mutation in a mitochondrial protein, uh, it leads to these devastating disorders. They affect one in 5,000 live births, um, and children with these diseases typically die within the first few years of life. Uh, and there's really no treatments available. And so what I found was that for this particular disorder, in animal models of disease, uh, hypoxia is actually protective. So if you expose these animals to half the amount of oxygen in the air, so equivalent to the mountains of Peru and Nepal, uh, they actually live fivefold longer. So this remarkable extension in lifespan just by breathing less oxygen on a daily basis. Um, and so we really think that we've identified a completely new way of treating individuals. And so my lab is now excited to extend this concept to more common conditions. Uh, so things like diabetes, neurodegeneration, and age-associated conditions. Um, and so we think that we've identified these diseases of too much oxygen. Um, and simultaneously, my lab is also very interested in studying states of too little oxygen. Um, and so if you think about the leading causes of death in the US, uh, three of the five of them are actually related to too little oxygen. 
So whether you have a heart attack or a stroke or respiratory disease, uh, in the end, the tissue dies because it's not getting enough oxygen or nutrients. Um, but it's still not clear which exact reactions are uh, not taking place in these states. And so we're really excited to figure out the mysteries of oxygen metabolism, um, partially from a basic science curiosity standpoint, but almost equal parts by the idea that we can take this knowledge um, and help patients. And so UCSF is really the perfect place to do this. We're surrounded by brilliant basic scientists um, and also by clinicians who help guide our experiments and projects in a way that they might one day translate uh, to the clinical setting. Uh, and so I feel very, very fortunate to be a part of the UCSF community. Uh, and I'm excited for the years to come. Thank you.